All right, how are you guys doing? We're going over both the truck series and expanding series in this video. If you've watched the last video that I made, that was an hour long, I understand it's a bit long, but it is literally everything I look at for these 1.5s. And I do the exact same thing for the truck series and the expanding series. So we don't need to turn this video into an hour long for each of those. Uh, we just need to pinpoint down where we want to go for both these races. I don't think we need to waste too much time. A lot of this stuff, especially, you know, the value range and like, 8,000 on back is really determined by where they qualify and just what their projected projection is for DFS and if they're viable or not. When we look at uh, Texas and how they perform and how they do at this track, we'll look at truck series first. So you look back at the last, we're going to look back at the last couple of truck series races at Texas. So we're, at, we're not going to use um covid for that come on racing reference i believe in you so when we look back at the last three truck races for texas and we see the amount of green flags that we get and the amount of dnfs that we have now you got to remember that this is like basically three different fields of the truck series that we've been looking at uh, and right now we're just analyzing how these races have have played out and stuff if you remember uh, this year's, no, last year's race um, in 2023, it was basically lined up identically with where people were at in terms of speed at the 1.5. It's kind of crazy how that works. Uh, and they all wrecked themselves, okay? Eckes, Zane Smith, Sanchez, Infinger, these guys are the fastest cars in the field week in and week out competing for the championship and they they all wrecked themselves and and they wrecked poor nick who, who just controlled the entire race okay when we look back at these other races as well we have had more green flag finishes in these uh races now we do have a lot of crashes and stuff but the actual percentage of yellow flags ran in this race is actually pretty uh it's actually pretty small man I mean, this is only percentage of like 20, 24, uh, 25. Like that's actually pretty decent for a truck series. We just end up having a lot of restarts and a potentially a lot of uh, chaos. And I think it's possibly not as bad as we might think it is. I mean, clearly this one was just a just a wreck fest here. But terms of the 1.5s where are we at where are the people we're, we're looking to play well, when we look at the truck series stuff it look guys i'm sorry to tell you what is what is what is kyle's price at this week hold on let me just check really fast because i know salary just came out earlier so he's 14.5 that's pretty expensive um and he's been hasn't necessarily been underperforming interesting i'll have to run stuff and it'll be very uh projection dependent on if he's going to be there but Guys, come on, man. It's pretty easy to figure out who's going to be, like, top 10 contenders here. You got Nicholas. You got Kyle Busch. You got Infinger. You got Corey. You got the Gray Brothers. You got Ankrum. You got Eckes. You got uh, potentially Lane Riggs, depending on what this team does. You got Stuart Friesen, who's probably going to run 9th to 7th all day. You got Roger Carruth, who's going to compete, who's basically, yet again, seeing where teams are at, identical. Basically, identical. And with how... Raja has been uh, showing pretty good improvement this year in terms of speed and performances. You look at Raja Karuth, you look at Kyle Busch, these guys are the same play. It's not that Raja's going to run away with the field and, and destroy it, but like, if you like Kyle Busch, you should like Raja Karuth. That's not saying play Raja over Kyle because they're two drastically different price tiers because uh, Raja's only 8700 But like, the Spire cars are going to compete. Like, that's just how it is. We got Chase Purdy who has been uh, more certainly lackluster than normal. But when we look at last year, uh, when they ended up wrecking, like Purdy was there. Purdy in the KBM car, yet again, based on teams of where they're performing, like Purdy was going to run seventh, you know, eighth, tenth. Like we, we know where Purdy's going to fall in line at. Can he take advantage of if people run into issues and stuff? Now, he did get um, damage involved in a wreck at Las Vegas. And so when we're looking at Vegas, uh, this race here, if I remember correctly. So we're like, when we look at Vegas and everything and where people fell in line, like not surprising, not surprising, not surprising, not surprising, not surprising, not surprising. 
finishing seven. Now this is based on finishing position, but like Grafton put him in tenth. Not surprising. Not surprising. Not surprising. Like everybody who finished up here were people who should have finished up here. Kyle Busch speeds in this race late, so he's taken out. That's still fifteenth, sixteenth. Nicholas runs into pit lane, pit road issues. I believe I could be wrong. I don't remember off the top of my head. I do apologize for that. But and then you got Friesen who also ran into issues. So like you have these four individual drivers who are going to compete for a top 10. And like, that's the top of the field, man. And then the rest of the field is just where these guys start, where they qualify, what is their projected, um, like points and everything. And so like entering this race, who, who are the favorites to lead a Texas Kyle Busch, Corey Heim, Christian Eckes. Like those would be your primary three guys. And then go through and the rest of the Tricon guys, like the, uh, gray brothers are going to be there. You have to have ownership to Dean Thompson just because he's Dean in a Tricon car. Like, we, we understand that. Raja Carruth, like, those are the guys that are going to come. Those are the guys that are going to compete for the lead, for the win, throw Anchor in there. Like, it, I don't know. At least up top, up top of the trucks. Like, it's the same guys week in and week out competing for the win. It'll just be dependent on what they do in qualifying and practice. That leans us towards them. Specifically, when we look at the Xfinity Series race now, this is the one that gets a little, little little nuts a little crazy in terms of um who ends up winning these races and who is the main lap leader now they do end up wrecking quite a lot here in the xfinity series which i like as a as a spectator i want to see crashes i want to see flips i want to i want to see uh, just a horrendous horrendous accidents and let's bring these last three races up all right 22 23 21, why is that there? Let's move. Okay, at least we're in order now. Um, okay, so going back from oldest to youngest, we have this race, 30% ran under yellow. Average green flag ran of 10 laps in this race. We see quite a lot of uh, incidents here, and it's both good and bad drivers stuff um, being taken out. Wow, shocker. Like like your favorites entering this weekend, I'm going to tell you right now, are Chandler Smith, uh, Justin Allgaier. Uh, I think Jesse Love is going to potentially be there. Austin Hill, um, the rest of Joe Gibbs' cars, and then Sammy Smith, um, Brandon Jones, the rest of the, uh, the Junior Motorsports cars. Like that should be your primary guys competing for. The lap slide, like that's not shocking. I understand that, like Custer would probably fit in line around like third to fourth. Uh, Herp should be like from like six to eighth, in terms of uh, not even interest, but in terms of like where he should fall in line at. And then we can just see where they're at in terms of practice time to see if we want to bump them up or move them down, or shuffle the top ten positions. But that's where they should be at uh, in this race. And we typically see, hey, the guys who are fast that the other one point fives this year were fast in this situation here. Um, is this the Harrison Burton turns left? Maybe it's not. That may have been two thousand. That may have been uh, twenty twenty when Rick Allen just screams Harrison Burton turns left and, and he beats uh, Gregson to the line. Um, when we look at this race here, which is the twenty twenty two race, not a lot ran under yellow, but we do have some pretty gigantic accidents here because these guys just don't know how to drive, and we have a huge amount of people just dying in this race. Um, and people finishing where they shouldn't be, like Joe Graff Jr. in the 07, Matt Mills in the 5, B.J. McLeod. Like, this is where punts are very much viable, uh, and you just got to hope that your, like, good guys aren't involved <laughs> in the crash here. Uh, when we look at last year's race, yet again, same thing. 32% uh, ran under yellow. And we look at the amount of cars being involved. Luckily, good cars, playoff cars are just highlighted. So good car, good car, good car, good car, good car, good car involved in in the damage here and then it just defaults to who was surviving here that's kind of why like this preview video is, is so short because it is texas a very difficult track at least for um especially coming out of the transition between two and the back straightaway that's where we see a lot of crashes or just how it tightens up out of four uh hopefully they just demolish it and turns it into the new atlanta so i don't have to go to georgia <laughs> anymore um but when we're looking at this race here like yet again your primary leaders or interest in this race Justin Allgaier, um, Chandler Smith, clearly, throw Custer in like fourth. Like it, it's the same guys. And then like your your value plays would just be dependent on not only where they qualify, 
but if they survive, and so like if we're looking at ugly cars here, like this is Cram finishing 21st here. Now, he started 25th, but still, like when we're looking at the the bad plays, like Finch up in the 66, I like him to survive. You know, I haven't seen Chad in a while, <laughs> but uh, like Joey Gaze 35th gonna start in the back of the field. When we look at um, Dawson Cram, gonna probably start in the back of the field. Look at Gary Smith, like gonna start in the back of the field. Like it makes a lot of these guys safe. David Starr, Patrick Emily, like these guys who start in the back of the field, if they start dead last, they should be in the pool based on the survival rate of this uh, of this event. So like everybody down low is in play. Depend if they start far enough back. We know the guys up top. Like it, it's just gonna depend on where they qualify and stuff. It's not me being lazy. It's just me being like, hey, this is what Texas turns into. Um, and yet again, a lot of the stuff that I'm looking at is the exact same data points that I look at for the Cup Series. I just don't want to waste your guys' time and stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's it. Going to be live Friday. Going to be live Saturday. Going to be live Sunday for all of these races. Um, Saturday and Sunday should be 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Friday will very much depend on when the or when Sheets and Bobby want to go live for their show and when I can fit it in between that. I might either go live before them or after them, but that's where uh, I'm at right now. So I will see you guys in live shows this weekend. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys later.